The Witcher is dead. It's over. It's finished. It's completed. It's it's. There's no more Witcher. It's done. A while back, I made a oh, video called cool The is. Witcher is Doomed, one that was covered by Asmongold. Thanks, dude. Well, here we are well, seven short it. months later, and the beginning of the end is here. Nerderotic.com. Greetings, you over 786,000 practitioners of common sense and the 40% who haven't subscribed yet. I want you to Maybe look I for a lot of game. I told you so's and... Okay. you! I was right! You, I was right. Over the next year, <laughs> currently, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery is the flop heard around the world. I and mean, I, I'm sorry, but like, bro, why are we, why are we exhuming these old actors that are like, way, like, dude, he, this is a fucking 70 year, he's got no business being in an action film. Fucking stop it. Let it, let it move on. Stop trying to appeal to this. He's 81. Wait, Harrison Ford's 81 years old? What the fuck? Let him go. Jesus. Competing with The Flash to become the biggest bomb of the year, and it is certainly... The Did he just put a baby in a microwave? I thought you weren't supposed to do that. Biggest financial disaster in Lucasfilm's history, or in this case, I should say, herstory. I have some major problems with this movie. One of the problems I have with the movie is that mm -hmm. uh, Phoebe's character was an asshole. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's a good thing for Netflix because fewer people have noticed A, The Witcher Season 3 even came out, and B, that it's abysmal. The beginning of the end is here. The yeah, chat says this. that he's leaving because he doesn't agree with the storylines that the writers have been developing. No. If that's the case, I can completely understand that because Henry is such a huge mm. fan of the games and the books, and the writers on the Netflix series have chosen, for whatever reason they did so, to deviate quite severely from the books and the games. Um, I personally don't understand the choice. Now, all of again, I think that deviating is totally okay. The problem is whenever you deviate and it's worse. That's the, that's the real issue, isn't it? It's not that you deviated, because of course you deviate. I think that you should deviate whenever you're committing something onto uh, cinema, but it's that it's bad. This could have been avoided if you listen to the fans, just like with Kathleen Kennedy over at Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. If you had listened to the fans, you had multiple times to fire her after The Last Jedi, after Solo, after The Rise of Skywalker, after she fired Gina Carano. But I think that people at this point with Star Wars, like the only good new character was Kylo Ren. I liked Kylo. I thought Kylo Ren was great. None of the other, I didn't give a fuck about any of the other ones. I didn't watch The Mandalorian though. So I could be wrong about this. Beyond all rational explanation, she is mm -hmm. still in charge. Yeah, and I don't know. Look where it's gotten them. We've also seen this with Chris Chibnall and the first female doctor played by Jodie Whittaker. Those two were only shown the door after the show. Doctor had Who, worst ratings in 31 years. I just, I don't know why people don't understand that, like, the gender of a character is, like, a very core element of the character. You can't just gender swap a character and expect people to be like, oh, okay. It's like a, it's a massive fucking element. Like, why are we pretending like it's not? Completely cratered. Same goes for Alex Kurtzman, who's been killing Star Trek now for years. Yes, he did have a recent success with know. Picard season three. One he had nothing to do with, but now he's gone right back to killing Star Trek. And now two of his shows have been canceled with more to come. This kid's got to go back to preschool. Michelle Yeoh is set to star in her own Star Trek movie. Oh, f it. The problem that a lot of these things have, like whether it's Star Wars or Star Trek or, um, you know, Indiana Jones, is that the IP is tied to like William Shatner or uh, why, why am I not thinking of his name? Or Sir Patrick Stewart, of course. Yes, of course. Patrick Stewart. Yeah, it's tied to them. And uh, it's the same within Star Wars, right? It's tied to the main characters in the original Star Wars. That's what people really give a shit about. It's not, guys, it's not Joe Rogan, okay? That's not Joe Rogan. Anyway, I think that's a big issue because they're not able to make new characters that people are engaged with in the same way. Now, in my opinion, 
I I liked actually Chris Pine as uh, uh as like who was he? It wasn't Commander? Fucking like he was the the replacement for William Shatner basically. I thought he was great. Yeah, Commander Kirk. Yeah, there you go. I haven't seen the movie in like ten years. I actually thought that the fucking uh, what was it the the second one with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch who was Khan. I actually thought that was a good movie. I liked it. Right. And now Netflix is doing the same thing. The second Henry Cavill started having a problem with Lauren Schmidt Hissridge's writing, she and her entire staff should have been gone. Admittedly, despite it having problems, I did like season one. Gave it a seven out of ten. I like this season is the one portion well. of the video where I get some I told you so's. Yeah. I told you so. I told you. I earned that. Despite my age, I'm still capable of being a sweet summer child. Now let's do a brief recap of The Witcher's Road to Failure. After a very successful season one where Netflix thought they had their Game of Thrones, we started- Yeah, I don't think that the show was as good as Game of Thrones. I don't think it was even remotely close, but it had, it, it had heart to it. And I think that it was, it had like some really good moments and it had decently good characters. I enjoyed it. Hearing some concerning comments from Henry Cavill. With the shift of the showrunner's vision where it's an ensemble cast more so than a singular lead and the perspectives is shifted to be almost more of a Cirilla Yennefer perspective. And so it's about- Yeah, nobody who gives a fuck. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but like, if you're watching The Witcher, like maybe it's just me, but like I'm watching The Witcher to watch Henry Cavill cut up demons and like monsters. Like, that, that's it. And, like, Yennefer is hot, which is nice, and Ciri is, like, his, his daughter, and so it's like, you know, you've got some nice moments between them. But other than that, let, let's get back to the, yeah, cutting up monsters, and yes, let's get back to that. Very simple. Finding my character's place within that vision and making mm -hmm. sure that I do everything I can to be as faithful to the source material as possible within the structure set out for me. That yeah. was Henry trying to temper our expectations, and that's a good thing because that's then sad. season two came out and they absolutely butchered the book Blood of Elves after Lauren Schmidt Hissridge completely ignored the fan complaints of there not being enough Witcher in The Witcher, she decided to put less Witcher in The Witcher for season two. Then we heard from former Witcher. Like, I wonder, like, how are the executives letting this happen? That This is what I never understand. Is like, things are just obviously going to shit. Like, because they did that Witcher blood origin, right? And that was really, really bad. Like, did anybody watch that? I don't think anybody, but like, because I, I saw I had like a, a zero out of 10. I was like, I'm not going to watch this. To writer Bo DeMeo, that writers on the show were openly mocking the source material. Then on October 13th of yep. 2022, Henry Cavill announced he was leaving The Witcher and it all gets worse from here. Shortly after that, a petition was started with over 300,000 signatures. Netflix, you must keep Henry Cavill as The Witcher and replace the writers instead. Then after that, we started to understand why Henry not only left, he ran. Blood Origin was released with a whopping 13% audience. I thought it was lower than that. I did. I thought it was even lower than 13%. Score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 1.4 user score on Metacritic. Making a pretty good case of being worst fantasy series in a year that Willow and the Rings of Power came out. Yeah, whatever happened to Willow? I, I heard that they were redoing Willow. And that's also, by the way, remember what I was saying earlier about how they're trying to keep all it flopped? It got canceled? Good. It's stupid. They shouldn't have done it. Yeah. Ye did and delete. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I remember watching the original Willow. It was great. I loved it. But, like, we don't need another one. Stop it. Just stop trying to make a quick buck on exploiting nostalgia. Like, you want to make a show uh, about Galadriel? That's nice. Then call it something different. Like, give her a different name, make it a different universe. But that was just a taste. What did Lauren Hissrich and her patriarchy smashing writing team have up their sleeves next? This brings us to The Witcher Season 3. Oh, I didn't even notice. 
First off, props to Henry Cavill for being a true professional. Part of being a professional is showing restraint, and I'm sure the first time he saw that script, he wanted to set it on fire and tell him to piss off. In season three, just like in season two and actually season one, everyone's after Siri. As the synopsis goes, as monarchs, mages, and beasts of the continent compete to capture her, Geralt takes Siri of Sintra into hiding, determined to protect his newly reunited family against those who threaten to destroy it. Season three is based on the book A Time for Contempt, which is appropriate because Lauren Hisrich has obvious contempt for the Witcher and men in general. At this point, you should just call the show The Witch Her, because this is clearly the Yennefer show, and it always has been one more time. Is it is it that bad? I haven't seen season three. Is it really that bad? Yes, it's bad. God, I don't even know. I, yeah. Season three is the worst of all. Holy shit. I'm as. I told you so. Jennifer, Siri, and their sidekick Geralt are all together again, except oh there's a little problem. I seem to recall last season that Yennefer betrayed both Geralt and Siri, and then Yennefer goes so far as to try to sacrifice Siri to get her magic back. But apparently, Siri and Yennefer worked it out before the season started, and it only takes a couple episodes for Geralt to forgive Yennefer. But why take the time to have Yennefer authentically redeem herself after, quite frankly, butchering her character last season when you could just blow past it and get back to girl bossing? Anya took yeah, I, I think that's always a mistake. A lot of times characters do that. They'll do something that's like obviously like a really bad thing and then they just kind of ignore it as if it didn't even happen. The right, yeah, off-screen resolution. Yeah, anything like that's always really bad. Lotra as Yennefer and Freya Allen as Siri are fine, but they're given nothing to work with this season. Just like last season, and I know this comes from the books, but Siri is just a girl who's the key to everything. That might have been new at one time, but it's not now. It's just a tired old trope. And Yasker is back to sing another song for Dan Vass to cover. And just in case you haven't heard, Yasker's totally by now because Netflix has been pretty subtle about it. And Yasker spends most of his time in a will gay, won't gay with Prince Radovid. I am not gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. Then there's our list of girl <laughs> They made him gay? I mean, look, I don't know about that. I'll be honest. Like, I, I, I had no idea. Bosses. There's the good girl boss, Tessaia, the uh -huh. bad girl boss, Philippa, the dumb girl boss and elf, Francesca, the former girl boss, Frangilla, who's put on some COVID weight, body positivity girl boss, Margarita, and Ava, who's technically a they-them boss, and a whole host of other characters, including Triss, Istrid, and Gahir, and I can tell you right now, I don't care about any of them. Not enough to even tell you what happens. Sure, there's a couple of decent moments. Yeah, why do they give a fuck about, like, why was it such a bad thing that it just, why couldn't it just be about the Witcher? Like, side characters, yeah. Like, I don't, nobody gives a shit about any of these characters. Like, what is this? I, I don't understand. It's like you, you are given the easiest job. All you have to do is do what's in the book and then put it on the screen. And somehow these people just can't figure it out. It's like, I guess like their own ego gets in the way. They're like, no, I have to, I have to leave my mark on it. I have to change it in a way to make it, to make it true to myself. Oh, fuck. Oh, what are we doing? Oh, God. What is this? with Lars Mikkelsen's Stregobor or Graham McTavish's Dijkstra, but they are fleeting. And brief moments do not make a show good. And I don't even know what the point was to bring in Emperor Amir to just do his best Cersei Lannister impression. When you have finished this mission, we shall have everything that we want. And Bart Edwards is too young. He looks like Ciri's older brother, not her father. And this brings us to the show's yeah, titular character, the Witcher, Geralt of Rivia. I love how, like, even even with like the guy talking about the season, this is I, I forgot he was in the show already. Like all they've been doing is talking about like the other characters. Yeah, the Witcher. Wait, oh yeah, I remember him. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Latvia, played by Henry Cavill, who's just an afterthought. We're told that this season is far more book accurate, I guess, except for when it isn't. Our boy I just don't understand how, like, book accurate should not even be the goal. Being good should be the goal. Like, every, almost every single adaptation of a book into a movie is changed. And it, it, sometimes it's changed in big ways. And it doesn't fucking matter. Harold has done dirty again. He's more babysitter than protector, and he goes on more inane side quests that didn't happen in the book. Except the original Lord of the Rings. Really? So Saruman fell off the pillar in the book. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Wow. Thank you. I didn't. Yeah, I had no idea. Well, that explains a lot. Including one where he finds a fake Siri and has to fight a fleshy girl bits monster mm -hmm. whose heads are hanging off the wall. Oh, bro, I don't want to see that. Like that reminds me of the finds a fake Siri and wait, has wait, to wait, fight so gotta... a fleshy girl bit. Bro, uh, uh nah, bro. Like, that's that, that's the remnant from Elden Ring. That's the fucking remnant from Elden Ring. Right? Fuck it all. Oh, yep. Heads are hanging off the no wall. No shot. And suspiciously like testicles. I told you so. Now this is the only monster he fights alone. He gets oh, help God. from Siri on the other two, and of course she gets the kill on the final one. But why see Geralt of Rivia <clears throat> slay monsters when you can see him sitting around and talking to Yasker, sitting next to beds, and crying for his mama? As you may or may mm -hmm. not know, Netflix cut this season in half to try to milk Henry Cavill, for lack of a better description, for all he's worth. And if you don't think Netflix- Wait, what? They cut it in half? Wait, what? Did I miss something? There's five in June and five in July. It's released in two parts. Dude, I saw the most cringe shit. So, like, some of the advertisements for Witcher, um, um, so they had, like, all these billboards and stuff, and they were basically announcing that, like, to get people to watch the show, they were saying, yes, he's still Geralt in Witcher 3. This is the, it was this fucking most sad and pathetic fucking thing I've ever seen. And also, like, isn't this kind of souring the audience's expectations for, uh, fucking Liam Hemsworth? I feel like it's kind of, like, I mean, fuck, he's not a terrible actor. Like, I mean, yeah, I think Henry Cavill would be better for the role, for sure. But, like, fuck, I mean, if I was Liam Hemsworth, I'd be like, ah, oh, oh, God, you know, thanks, guys, really appreciate it. Yeah, what is this? It's just general milking by the mo- Yeah, it's like they're just giving up. Fuck, man. Yeah, our new actor, he's not that bad. Netflix is keenly aware that their you show is saying? dead. I give you this from Forbes. Netflix throws Liam Hemsworth yeah. under the bus yes, yes, in a desperate yes, marketing yes. bid for The there Witcher Season 3. And here's the tweet from The Witcher. Just in case you need a reminder, okay. yes, he's still Geralt in Season 3. Ouch. And where does Lauren Hisrich decide to end this first part of the season? With a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Which is strange because this show has no balls. And it doesn't end there. This also happens to be oh, the God. worst episode of the worst season. The episode is mostly told in flat. I feel like, um, uh, again, it it seems like, like there's a lot of this like royalty and like this plotting stuff, etc. I just, like, I never read the Witcher books. So like, maybe I'm off base on this. But whenever I think of The Witcher, I think of, number one, The Witcher. And I think of living off of the land, being one of the only Witchers left, like uh, the, the dichotomy of protecting people but being hated by them. Uh, and, and it's like very much like a, it's not a solo act. But he is, a, he's a, I mean, literally, look at the fucking thing. He's a lone wolf. That's the, the, the thing that they have. So, like, it, it, I'm trying to think of, like, what would what would I imagine The Witcher to be like? I'm trying to think of, like, a, a book or, like, you know what I'd imagine The Witcher to be like? The first half of Django Unchained. That There you go. That's what it would be. 
with like fucking Christoph Waltz and Jamie uh, Jamie Fox going around popping bitches off. Like that the first half, that's what I expected. It was gonna be it's gonna be the whole season, different adventures. Sometimes Vesemir's there, sometimes there's maybe another Witcher guy there, and that's it. Involved uh, politics from other countries too? Maybe, yeah. So yeah, like Berserk. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's some politics in Berserk. I mean, sure, but yeah, I don't think so. There's a ton of politics in Witcher between nations and mages. Well, maybe you're right, and that's what I'm saying, right? Is I could be wrong about that, but like going into it, that's what I expected. Is the first half of Django Unchained, instead of uh, you know, The Witcher, you know, instead of like uh, you know, Django and. Uh, uh, Dr. Schultz, uh, it would just be fucking Geralt and Yennefer, or Geralt and Ciri, or Geralt and Vesemir. And that's it. Flashback with multiple repeated scenes, and the big twist is we're not seeing different perspectives, we're simply seeing different angles. I'm not doing this awful writing justice. Again, we see the same scenes twice, we hear the same dialogue twice just from a different angle episode five was called the art of illusion so and they're really dragging it out then if you weren't sure all is not what it seems they had some bards singing all is not what it seems over and over again all is not as it, seems. it looks like lauren hisrich went to the ryan johnson school of dumb filmmaking meant to make you believe it's smart and i know the costuming and the sets have never been spectacular yeah, in the i've Witcher. noticed that a lot with like a lot of the uh, recent films is that i feel like they have to explain every single nuance because they assume that the audience is brain dead they're like wait a minute in case you didn't get it wait hey, oh you didn't get it okay let me explain it again but it has devolved to being indiscernible from things like Willow, the Wheel of Time, and the Rings of Power. And things like time and distance are completely thrown out the window this season. You have no idea where you are. You have no idea how long anything takes. We know no. these events take over weeks and months, but in the show, it feels like a couple of days. Put simply, this show is dumb. Tell me, why would you drop off all of your things on the top of a cliff when you have to climb down to catch a ferry? How does a peasant get such expensive, modern-looking hair? <laughs> Why did a monster decide not to eat the diverse cast members? Why do all the mages who we are told are beautiful in the books look like they work for the Netflix marketing department? And how much was the budget cut for this season? The CG largely was laughably bad, including this Siri horse riding scene. This is where we get to see the wild hunt. And if you watch Blood Origin, which the vast majority of you didn't, you would know that the mighty and formidable King Aridin is actually just a wafy guy who's mad because his boyfriend died. When the show is an abysmal- oh, I thought he was like a, um, like my understanding of it was this, right? Is that like with the, the wild hunt, they thought they were like demons or some shit, but they were actually just from another dimension. That's what I thought it was. Yeah, isn't that it? Yeah, they're elves, basically. Aridin's gay not too. Yeah, I, I, I. No idea. In the books, they're just demons. There's a lot more. Oh wow, the elves are from a different time timeline that genocided humans. Yeah, with the conjunction of the spheres or some shit. I remember. I think I watched a YouTube video about it. Well, it's incredibly boring, and it's pretty clear Henry Cavill made mm -hmm. the right decision. And it looks like the people agree because Jesus. it is getting destroyed. Thomas S. One star. Started off okay. Not really. But pacing was strange. Yes, it was. Characters' traveling speed made no sense. Hard to figure out where scenes were taking place. They did that in Game of Thrones, too, where, like, towards the later uh, seasons, I remember, like, people complained a lot that... It's like uh, the characters were effectively teleporting. And so much side character nonsense that just drags on for no reason. But honestly, watching the last episode five was one of the most painful, difficult things I have watched in a while. A shitty song played over and over again as dialogue and scenes are repeated again and again, all for a reveal we already knew since like season one. <laughs> Josh A, half star, just a teenage love drama, barely made it through the first couple of episodes, but decided to reluctantly chug on. To my dismay, the last episode was the worst of them Jesus. all. Ion G, half star, season oh three God. is more accurate to the books. 
meaning random Easter eggs from the books without context, and the meaning changed so much that it makes oh, no God. sense. They ruined impactful scenes from the books just to put them in this rotten show. Bad cringe characters are not even book accurate, and I think he meant to say neither are the monsters. This seems like bad fan fiction. Let me play devil's advocate. Maybe Lauren Hisrich and her team of writers didn't adapt the books properly because they wanted to play to their strengths. The only problem with that argument is, as writers, they don't have any strengths, and it's because that's the issue. That's the problem. Again, I, I, I've got to say, I've said it again, I say it again, I say it again. Is that you should change the source material from the book because you are doing it into a different medium. That's why I think a lot of the uh, all of the anime adaptations that I've seen are garbage because the anime isn't film. You can't one to one it. Like it almost never works. Stop doing it. You have to adapt it. But it's you're adapting it wrong. That's the issue come abundantly clear Lauren and her team can't write men but to be fair they're only slightly worse at that than writing women I'll remind you that we are going into the third month of the writer's strike and I would all oh, actually uh, the 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 executives the big shots in Hollywood actually have a way to solve the problem with the writer's strike what they're going to do is they're gonna wait for all they said this um, that they're going to wait for all the writers to go broke and then they'll come back because they won't have any money. Yeah, they're just going to let them die. <laughs> I'm serious. That's that's literally what it was. Like, that's actually, that's horrible. Yeah, there, there it is. also like to mention that I've spent the last couple of weeks watching things like Strange New Worlds, The Flash, Secret Invasion, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Dysentery, and now The Witcher Season 3. And I'm just going to say... You're not making a good case for yourself. Go ahead, stay on strike. I don't even care what happens in the second half. The Witcher season three is awful, and this show is dead. If you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like what you heard, I thank you for listening this long. I will see you in the next video. Yeah, I, I think that that's, I think that's true. People are just fucking, I, I think losing the main the main actor is just like that's just so bad like just categorically that's such a bad thing to have happen that's awful some bad shows and movies equals all writers are bad I think there's been a number of people this is kind of like a, a vibe that I've gotten and tell me if you feel the same way or not I feel like it's been a well-established fact that people haven't really liked the way that a lot of shows nowadays are being written and movies are being written like, I, I feel like a lot of them, I remember watching, uh, I watched Rings of Power, and it's like throughout the entire thing, I was just thinking to myself, what a dramatic difference the dialogue was in like Lord of the Rings versus Rings of Power. It was just like, it was a night and day difference. It was like the difference between like, you know, fucking uh, a, a middle school project and like a fucking PhD project. It was totally different. Oh, so much writing is shit nowadays. Yeah, it is. Halo ruined it the same way. See, like, I didn't even watch the Halo series. Why would I? I heard it was bad. Did you uh, do Rings of Power review? No, I did not. I probably should at some point. React to his newest video, too. I might. I'll link you guys the video. I think this is pretty good. I liked it. And uh, Order of the Rings took years to write. Of course, it's better than some TV show. I mean, it also took years to write from like one guy they have like a whole team of people and that's a good point but it was season one by the way so they could have spent more time writing it ahead of time like yeah it's, it's season one it, it, come on man the writers are forced by the studio to write this way well, i i don't I, I don't really care all i'm saying is that this is why i think a lot of people aren't sympathizing as much with the writers for the writer strike because they are not happy with the current writing in like a lot of movies it's that simple. Yeah, like that that's all I'm saying. I, I don't think this is an this, this is not an unreasonable take here. Whatever AI can do a better job writing and reporting than a so-called creative professional. There may be a problem at striking the current timeline. Yep, uh, and that's what they'll do. Yep, they'll just have AI write. They'll have writers from other countries come in. Yeah, that's just what's going to happen. I mean, again, like there's just not really much you can do about that. Didn't mind rings of power. I just wanted more of uh 
more of the Lord of the Rings world. Uh, yeah, I mean, as I said, like, I, I, I actually thought, like, there were some cool things about Rings of Power. I liked the, um, I, I want to say Muradin, but it's not Muradin. Uh, Elrond and uh, Durin. Uh, Elrond and Durin, like their relationship, I thought that was pretty good. I, I liked it. It was nice. Uh, I, I thought like the, uh, especially like some of the scenes and shit like that with like the trees of Valinor, uh, the fucking, the scene with Sauron at the beginning, like those were pretty cool. I liked them. So I'm, I'm not saying like it's awful. Elrond was shown well. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah, but that's what the strikes are about. They're pro protesting in the potential for AI to make them redundant and they want worker protection against this. Well, you can't expect, like, the thing is, I, I just, this is my, like, maybe this is, like, a weird opinion, but, like, I don't think that the company needs to offer the workers protection for their jobs. I think the government needs to offer the people protection from homelessness. It's not the company's job to give them a job. It's the company's job to make money, and it should be the government's job to make sure that people aren't on the streets. It's like completely backwards in my mind. No, no, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I, I, I think that's the, that, that's what Pete, that, that's who should be responsible for what. Can't expect companies to willingly go against their profits. Yeah, yeah, but government will never do that. I mean, I think government does that in other countries, but also like the world is changing a lot, and if you can't adapt with it, I think that's a bad thing. That's what I think the issue is.